Good morning, my name is Brian. I'm the owner operator here at Boathouse Bokers down in South Louisiana. I got a cooker on the shop floor today that I wanted to make a quick video out of before it gets out of here next week. Uh, this guy's headed all the way up to the Atlantic Northeast, Stowhagen, Maine. I hope I got that right. All right, let's take a minute to talk about uh, your different draft options you have with our offset smokers. Uh, you actually have three different options with all of our larger offset smokers. Uh, this particular model here is our hybrid reverse flow, and we will uh, we will get to that in a minute. Let's start with, with option number one, would be your traditional uh, standard flow, uh, which is where your heat comes up into the main chamber here, it comes across your cook crates, you'll have a heat collector with exhaust on this side, the heat will come into the heat collector and then out the exhaust. All right, option number two would be use your traditional reverse flow. With your reverse flow, you will have a plate in the bottom of the cook chamber that's welded from here, 40 inches all the way about over to here. And what, what that does is that that baffle plate allows the heat to come up into the cook chamber. It runs underneath the baffle plate, then it comes up into the cook chamber and then it will run all the way across your grates to about here where you'll have a heat collector and another single exhaust that'll bring it in and out uh, there. Now, this particular, this is, this is what we call our hybrid reverse flow design. Uh, it has the baffle plate in there. It's the same thing as a reverse flow. It's the only difference. Instead of having the single exhaust on this side, we have the two exhausts on top. And the reason why those guys exist, and this is typically, uh, or somebody else, uh, well, if it's built correctly, you know, you don't need to exhaust. Yeah, I agree with that somewhat. Uh, but a lot of people don't take into account for a lot. There's a lot of more different variables that uh, have a lot to do with uh, consistent heat left versus right than just the, the design of the cooker. Uh, for number one, you're going to be dealing with heat transfer. Uh, typically, the right side of the cooker it's gonna be a little bit hotter than the left side of the kicker over time, just strictly due to it's closer to the heat source. You know, you got your fire inside your box, that piece of metal is touching this piece of metal, this piece of metal is touching this piece of metal, this piece of metal is touching your baffle plate, and so on. So typically, uh, you know, the right side or the side with your fire box, you're gonna have a, a little bit abundance of heat on that side. Now, uh, when you start seeing, and, and that's the reason of the, of the second exhaust up there, when you start seeing those heat discrepancies, let's say you get a five degree uh, heat discrepancy on the right side, it's five degrees hotter. So you can come over here, shut this guy off, and then open this one fully. And what that does is it brings your heat in, it'll go under your baffle plate, it'll come up, and it'll go straight out that exhaust instead of coming back over here and out the exhaust. And what that'll do is over time, it will allow that right side uh, to drop down and level out, and you, and you can split the difference. You know, you can you can you can run seventy percent out the left side and and thirty percent out the right side. Just whatever you need to do to, to level that thing out. Uh, it's not a it's not exact science. There's a lot of there's a lot of play and a learning curve with trying to figure out how to you know how to run these 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 double double stacks. Uh, I just feel that I like it a lot better than the single stack because at least you have the option. You know, if you have just have the single stack on there, whether it be a traditional or a reverse flow, you have no option. It is what it is. And I agree, when the, when the, when the cooker is built correctly, it should run, uh, it, it should run, you know, pretty close to even. But a lot of people don't take into account too, as far as your proteins. You know, let's say you got, let's say you got 10 pork butts on this top row and you got 10 pork butts on this bottom row. Well, uh, you know, all proteins don't break down and cook evenly. You know, some of them cook faster than others. And when you have that happening, what you have is an extra insulated heat source. You know, so if the ones on the left side are cooking faster than the ones on the right, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna retain heat on the left side, so you can actually cause that left temperature spike uh, to rise. So uh, just something else to think about. It's just, it's just something I've never, I don't, I've never seen anybody else doing this. Uh, like I said, I've been building cookers for about 20 years, actually longer than that. Uh, but it was just a common thing that people just always just, just dealt with. You know, they just thought, hey, you know, it just it is what it is. And I thought, well, heck, why can't we just put another stack up there and we start seeing the discrepancies? We'll just, you know, we'll just change the direction of the flow and direct that flow, you know, away from the hot spot. And, and it does work. It does work really well. Uh, it doesn't happen immediately. You know, when you start seeing an influx, you might close off that, that right side and open up that left side. But over the course of the next 45, 50 minutes or so, you will start seeing 
uh, the, the 10th level out. So uh, I just think it's, uh, I like to give my customers a choice, you know, so you got, you got one of three ways you can do it depending on your cooking style. All right, let's take a look at the cook chamber on this guy. This is a 48 by 24 by 30. Uh, so it's 48 inches wide, 24 inches deep, and 30 inches tall. It's fabricated from quarter inch steel. Uh, let's take a look inside. All right, you got two full size racks inside uh, that are removable. These racks measure 47 by 23. If you look in the roof, you got five sausage hangers, uh, half inch rods welded in the roof uh, to hang sausage or chicken or whatever you hang in, you know, whatever you like to do there. Uh, if you take a look down in the bottom, you can see the baffle plate that we talked about. And that baffle plate serves two purposes. It, it actually forms the reverse flow where the heat can flow underneath there, come up into the cook chamber here. But if you also notice it's sitting on about a 10 degree angle. And what that does is that allows all your grease drippings from here uh, to drip down on that plate. And then they can gravity feed over to the left side of the cook chamber where they can drip down into the bottom. Now underneath here, about right in here somewhere, uh, there's a plate that's welded, it's about four inches tall and it's seal welded from the front to the back of the cooker. So what that does, it forms a reservoir down there to hold all your grease. And if you look at the outside, uh, you actually have a ball valve under there. You can see it. Actually, the ball valve's not even on there right now. But anyway, there's a ball valve underneath there uh, that you can open and close to drain your grease and properly dispose of. All right, let's talk about the firebox. Uh, firebox is 24 by 24 by 22. Uh, it's fabricated from quarter inch steel, uh, double wall quarter inch steel. It's got a quarter inch on the outside, an inch and a half of insulation, and a quarter, uh, quarter on the inside. Uh, all of our all of our offset smokers uh, come with a standard half inch thick door. That door by itself weighs about 100 pounds. All right, look inside the firebox. Uh, you have a wood tray that's like 20 by 20 down in the bottom, and it is removable for easy disposal. Uh, on all of our fire boxes on our offsets, uh, we use ball valves for our air intakes. And people ask us all the time, man, that's an expensive way. Why do you use ball valves for your intakes? And I can tell you, we used to use the little slide door method, you know, or the, uh, the pinwheel method. But, uh, when heat gets hot, it expands, and when it get, cools off, it contracts. So over time, uh, those slide doors, they would just always fail. They would gum up on me, they would get debris and stuff in them, plus they would they would just warp from, from, from years of youth and contraction and uh, expansion. So uh, we did away with that, and we went with the ball valves, and I've never had a ball valve fail on me. Plus, they look really clean. And if they ever did fail, all you have to do is unscrew one and screw the other one back on. So I just think it's a win-win. All right, let's talk a little bit about the off-road package in these custom wheels. Uh, all of our offsets, uh, you have the option for the off-road package. Uh, you got two options with wheels. You can go with the 10-inch wheels or the 14-inch wheels. This particular model has the 10-inch wheels on it, and we use 2,000-pound uh, trailer axle hubs and spindles for each wheel. Uh, so it's very heavy duty. It's not gonna fail on you. For the steering mechanism up front with the wagon pull, we use a 1,500 pound industrial turntable. Let me uh, get you a view of that. So it moves around fairly easy. One person can, you know, can drag this thing, load it in a trailer, uh, just whatever you need to do with this thing. This thing weighs probably, uh, I think it weighs right at, weighs right at about 1,400 pounds. And like I said, one person can move it around pretty effortless so uh all right guys that's all i got on this one uh if anybody's interested in one of these or uh, any of the cookers that we made please reach out to us and let us know uh you can reach us on all of our social media instagram facebook uh youtube tiktok and twitter give you one last walk around Beans wants to be in the video. Sorry, guys. All right, we'll catch y'all next time.